Hey you guys, C here. Thank you so much for clicking to join me in today's video. It is finally fall. And so today I am sharing with you all of my fall sewing plans or my Q4 sewing plans or what I plan on working on for the rest of the year. Let me grab my notes and let's start things off with frock tails. So the very first thing and takes priority because of the time limit is frock tails. Now I've already purchased my ticket for Raleigh frock tails. And at the time I am filming this video, I have less than two weeks before the event. Matter of fact, I have 13 days. Okay. So that is Raleigh frock tails. And then I think Charlotte frock tails is the week after that. So I haven't purchased my ticket for Charlotte only because as time was drawing near, I was realizing, hey, we've got a lot going on. Making those dresses for my brother's wedding and rehearsal dinner took a lot out of me, okay? A lot, okay? And so well, I had to take some time to recoup and rest and get my mojo back up and running, right? And so having the two events back to back, it's kind of throwing me off. Now I do have the pattern in mind for Raleigh and I've also picked up my fabric and my notions for that. We'll touch on that in just a minute. But if I do decide to go to Charlotte Frock Tales as well, I'm probably just going to go thrift a gown or thrift a dress and upcycle it. That's if I decide to go because life is just life in and work is really taking a lot out of me. So I, I may have to say, I may have to pass on that. But for Raleigh Frock Tales, I had originally chosen McCall 7718. And I have a Pinterest board dedicated to my goal or my vision for frock tails. And, and I told you I have less than two weeks and I still haven't started, right? So as time was winding down, I realized that I may not have dedicated enough time to iron out this garment because I was looking at view A and it requires a lot of fabric. It requires 16 yards of fabric. So I decided to pass on this. And instead, on simplicity.com, I ordered McCall's 7047. This is one of those patterns where you mix and match the pattern pieces. It's rated as easy, so that led me to believe that it would be less pieces, less notions, quicker to whip up. So my whole Pinterest board is just gone to hell. And instead, we're just gonna go as on theme as we can and really not even focus on the theme. I'm just looking forward to meeting everybody. And by the way, if you're going to Raleigh Frock Tales, drop a comment down below and let me know because I want to make sure that we meet that night, okay? Nonetheless, that is my Raleigh Frock Tales fit. As I mentioned earlier, I've already found my fabric. My fabric has already been pre-washed. I already have my notions. I just gotta get started, okay? I, I just gotta get started. So that's it. After I tackle frock tails, then I have to work on my make nine challenge. Earlier in the year, I made a pledge as to the nine things that I wanted to tackle for this year, some sewing goals as well. I don't wanna handle my make nine like my me made make pledge because that was not successful. But make nine, it should be. I have four makes left. The first of which is a thrift flip, a bag, denim jeans, and a wool coat. So my thrift flip, months ago, I went thrifting and found some pieces that I would like to flip. This is a, this outfit is like JCPenney's circa 1999, okay? My mama wore this to church, okay? That's what it's giving. This is a Sag Harbor dress. Sag Harbor, okay? And I'm gonna see, I think I took footage of it earlier in the year, but if not, I will show you, I'll just give you a brief before of what it looks like. But it is just a shift dress. Do we call this a shift dress? What is this? An A-line dress? An A-line dress and a short sleeve little shrug to go over it. I think it has potential. I think it's ugly, but cute in a way. Like, I really like it. I really like it. I think it just needs just a little bit of jazzing up. 
now would be the time to go ahead and do the alterations and flip it because I still have time to wear it before the temperature completely drops. So this is the thrift flip that will be part of my make nine. And so I just need to make time to just put my thinking hat on my creative box, think out of the box and see how I can revamp that. If you have any suggestions on how I can bring this to 2024, please let me know because that form of creativity is not my strong suit. Then earlier in the year as well, so these are things I've been thinking of. I just got sidetracked with a ton of challenges, but I picked up Simplicity 8655. Um, I've already made View A. I made that earlier in the year. And so now I'm looking at View B or View C. I don't have a preference, but I have this gray denim that still has not been cut. I did cut the pieces for a mock-up. I don't like how the fabric is, so I never sewed it up. And that's because I am concerned about the fit. I purchased the pattern size 6 to 14 with the 14 in mind. Based on the finished garment measurements, I would be wearing between a 14 and a 16. And so I don't want to cut this fabric and make a 14. So that's the greatest size that I have for this pattern. And it's too small. That's why I've been taking my time with this one. But... The worst case scenario, I just give it to my mom if it doesn't fit. I don't know. Give it to somebody. Who knows? But that is a pattern that I plan on making for the jeans. For the wool coat, I've already selected McCall's 8438. And I'm looking at view B. I like the length. I like the sleeves. I like the waist belt. And so what I want to do is find a really good quality flannel or wool flannel or a wool blend. I may have to come out of Joanne and certainly out of Hobby Lobby for that. I'm I'm certain I won't find it in Hobby Lobby. I may find the type of fabric in Joanne, but I don't think it's going to give me the quality that I want for this. Now, I should take this pattern or this goal with a grain of salt because like most patterns, you make it and then you want to build upon it or finesse it or do something better or different the next time around. I don't want to put all of my eggs in this basket and invest in really good quality fabric and it something turns out wrong. I should probably just take what I could get, maybe find something on clearance or on sale, make it and then source that really good quality. I might sell them across fit issues. Um, who knows? But this is the pattern that I want to use for my wool coat. So stay tuned. I may possibly do a solo dedicated video to this make. And then the last on my make nine list is a bag or a purse. And I have three patterns to choose from out of my stash. But I don't know which one I want to tackle. So I have Simplicity 9968. This is a little girl's bag pattern. You have three different purse variations and then you have a little key charm or whatever to put on your purse. This would be cute for my daughter. The only reason I hesitate on that is because I don't want her to get excited about me making her a bag and I totally tank it or I mess it up or it doesn't look right or it's heavily flawed and then I'm disappointed and don't want to give it to her or it just doesn't work out and she's disappointed. That's why I hesitate on that one. But then I also have McCall's 8272 for myself. This pattern and the little girl's pattern are rated as average. Since I've never made a bag, I'm not well versed in bag making. Maybe I should try for an easy pattern instead. I don't know. And so if that is the case, then I picked up Simplicity 9908. But then it's not giving me the chic vibes that I would like. It's not something that I would wear with a nice outfit. It would be more of a casual piece, but is anything wrong with that? No, but you see what, you see my thought process and why I haven't really narrowed down my choice for the bag. So if you have any suggestions out of the three of those, definitely drop them down in the comments below. So now that we've discussed frock tails and my make nine challenge, now I wanna move into some staple pieces that I would like to make this fall or this year. The first of which is a cardigan. And there is a brand new fall pattern, Simplicity fall pattern. It's a Mimi G pattern. I actually have it, but
but I've already paired it with fabric and I don't want to go looking for it. Um, but I think it's 3003 or 3010. I like that cardigan. I also have another one in my stash that once again is paired with a fabric. With the weather in my area, layering pieces is definitely a must, especially this time of the year. It's chillier in the morning, it's scorching hot in the afternoon, and then it levels off again in the evening. I like the option of being able to wear something and then taking it off midday if necessary. And that's why a cardigan is a must. It also has to be a neutral color, something that I can wear more often, um, something that I can wear with a ton of pieces, a ton of colors, a ton of patterns. The second fall staple that I'd like to work on is a denim jacket. And for that denim jacket, I've picked up Know Me, 2089. This is a Brittany J. Jones. I think this is one of the only Nomi patterns that I have. It reminds me of a cropped trench coat, but the suggested fabrics include broadcloth, cotton blends, denim, gabardine, linen blends, micro suede, stretch wovens, twill, wool blends. So a variety of fabrics that you can use with this. I like View B. Let's see, what is the difference between View B and View A? um okay it looks like view a has a buckle around the wrist i don't need that okay so view b it is i'd like that i have outgrown my denim jackets since my last pregnancy and then also it's a little dated so i want something a little more current a little more modern a little more fresh so there's that pattern then i also want to get into a leather jacket and I don't know if I want to do a leather blazer or a leather moto jacket, but I have McCall's 8011. I purchased this towards the beginning of last year and never got around to working with it. I'm also surprised that it is rated as easy. It has 13 pieces, but it's rated as easy. You have a cropped and a longer version. Um, you've got pockets on the chest or the lapel as well. So I'm interested in working on this. I'm very excited. This will probably be the first jacket pattern that I work on. And the suggested fabrics for this include denim, twill, chino, and faux suede. So, so yeah. So I think a full suede like View B would look awesome. And then maybe saving that leather jacket in a blazer form. And I definitely have some blazers. Oh, I have a vintage blazer pattern that I think would look great in leather. Let's see if I can find it. Um, One second. So the vintage 90s pattern that I have, I mentioned it in an earlier video, I think, but it is McCall's 8433. While faux leather is not mentioned, it does say synthetic suede. And so we can get away with it. Denim, gabardine, medium weight linens, brocade, chalet, corduroy, wool crepe, wool blends. Yeah, leather it is. Faux leather. And I think view... It has to be streamlined, so I think view C would be where it's at. Mm, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. That worked out. Okay. After that, I want to work on a sweatsuit. I would like to have a go-to sweatsuit on my casual days, on um, leisurely, on the weekends, something like that. And I have New Look 6142 in my stash. I picked up this pattern because it was 99 cents at Hobby Lobby earlier in the year. And it has a lot of views. It is a his and hers pattern. I don't like the fact that it is a zip up hoodie. I would prefer a sweatshirt. When I think of my sweatsuits, I would prefer a sweatshirt. But it's what I have. I'll keep looking out. Um, so I may not do this one exactly, but it's what I have. But that leads me to the next thing that I would like to make for my Me Made wardrobe this fall or this year. And that is a sweatshirt or a hoodie. One of those go-to, just put on, go run errands, go do whatever. Um, I want it to be comfortable, but I want it to last me a while. And so I have Simplicity 9240. It has two views. One is a sweatshirt and one is a hoodie. I like both of them. And so I can mix and match. I can make this sweatshirt to go with these sweatpants. 
on the on the new look pattern there are infinite opportunities with the sweatshirt and sweatpant patterns out in the universe so that is my plan for that now that i've shared my fall goals or plans for the rest of the year let me share with you some patterns that i've recently picked up and many of which are suitable for fall and winter now the first of which is a robe pattern and that is simplicity 1562 this is rated as easy it is for everyone in the household i only purchased it for me and that is because i found myself needing a robe <laughs> I've never had the desire for one before, but now my husband takes the kids to daycare and school each morning. And so I help get them ready. And so I just feel like it's more suitable to have a robe on. It's just easier. And then when I'm lounging around the house, a robe would be nice. I'm also considering a mumu too. I think I have advanced into the stage of life where a mumu suits me, okay? But before we get there, let's tackle this robe, especially since I walk the kids out of the house and help load them into the car. One of my neighbors walks and I'm sure she's tired of seeing me pantless. So, robe it is. I like that it has pockets. This is fleece season. So I should be able to find a really good quality fleece. Now this robe is not lined, so it is important for me to find a fleece that feels good on the inside as well, the back side of the fabric feeling good but i'm looking forward to shopping fleece you know joanne's has a ton of fleece to choose from so robe it is the next pattern that i picked up is simplicity 9906 this is a vintage 60s apron pattern it is also rated as a jiffy pattern so it is two main pattern pieces easy to cut easy to sew i am not big on aprons i don't wear one when I first taught myself how to sew, I remember making an apron. Don't know where it is. It probably wouldn't fit. Yeah, it would. It would fit me. But yeah. But as we're headed into holiday season, I anticipate on hosting parties this year. And why not be dressed really cute with my nice little cute apron on, okay? And not one of those to just pull over my head and just, you know, do whatever. But a nice housewife apron, okay? Rich auntie is the vibe that I'm going for. So I like view one and I like view two. I think I'm good on view three because it just looks like a smock. But view two may be aware it's at. And of course, Hobby Lobby has all those beautiful cotton fabrics to choose from. The quilting fabrics at Joanne. I'm certain to have a lot of fabrics I'll be able to choose from when I get ready to make this pattern. So look out for that. That is Simplicity 9906. The next pattern is another vintage pattern. I've got a handful of vintage patterns. Matter of fact, I mentioned several videos ago, I think I'm entering my vintage era. So. Okay, so this is Simplicity 9739. This is a vintage 70s dress. It is also another super jiffy pattern. One main pattern piece, easy to cut, easy to sew. I think I've mentioned this pattern on the channel before, but I don't want this pattern to get away from me. I want it very close to me. I want to remember that I have it because this is the time of the year where it would be perfect. It is a versatile piece. I like that you can wear the dress alone. I like that you can pair it with a top underneath, short sleeve top, a long sleeve top, a turtleneck. You can also layer a cardigan or a sweater on top of it. I'm here for it. I like the versatility. I like the length options so I can go short, I can go long. I've got to make this piece and I've got to make it ASAP. I have to make it in a fabric choice, a fabric color that is very versatile as well, that I could pair it with um, a design or a different color, something like that. So Simplicity 9739 rated as very easy. And I like the idea of one piece. So we'll see how that works. Suggested fabrics, cotton types, denim, flannel, lightweight wool types, linen types. <gasps> and sateen oh i love me some sateen i probably wouldn't do sateen in this um i picked up a chambray and that chambray will probably be really dope with this if i have enough um finished body measurements i would be making a medium and i would need two and three fourths for the long jumper i think i only bought two yards of chambray 
maybe two and a half. I'll measure and see. But stay posted for that one. The next vintage pattern, vintage 70s pattern, is Simplicity 3049. That's 3049. This is a dress, tunic, and pants. I am interested in the tunic and the pants worn together. It's very Diane Carroll, okay? Once again, I'm headed into my rich auntie phase, okay? That's, that's the look that I'm going for. This is rated as easy to sew. I, I'm loving that. Um... And the suggested fabrics are bonded crepe, jacquard, double knit, linen, uh, polyester knit, silk, silk linen, and then you've got some linings that are needed as well. The tunic and the top, yes, with a nice pair of pumps. I'm here for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look great. I'm gonna look great. That's another pattern that I don't want it to go too far away. Like, I want to make that one ASAP as well. I could wear it to work, uh, an event this holiday season. Yes. Now, the last vintage pattern that I have is another vintage 70s simplicity pattern. This is a jiffy pattern as well. This is simplicity 3047. That is 3047. And this is a coordinate set. This is a Mrs. Pants and Jacket. Suggested fabrics are canvas, won't be using, denim, double knit, duck, don't like duck either, medium weight wool, novelty peak, poplin, wool, flannel. The pants can be in chino, gabardine, and tweed as well. And then you got some interfacing. I like this. For my area and this time of the year, layering pieces is definitely a must. And I can see myself wearing this to work. I look very sophisticated in this um be able to play around with some prints or working with pieces that are interchangeable i like this I, i'm also excited that this says two or three main pattern pieces i love that that is music to my ears um easy to cut easy to sew right up my alley that's what i need so that is simplicity 3047 look out for that one i don't want this one to go very far either I think this fall and winter is just going to be a vintage era because that's mainly where my mind is. Now, the next pattern I picked up is because there is a challenge that I'm participating in that is coming up very soon. I can't say much about the challenge because it is not mine, but I do need a bomber jacket and cargo pants. And I've gone ahead and purchased both. So the cargo pant pattern that has been chosen for me is McCall's 8206. I was never a fan of cargo pants. I haven't been since I last wore them in third grade up until this year. And this year I made a simplicity pattern. I'll drop pictures of it as well as the pattern number on the screen. I really like those cargo pants. But of course, like most things, you make it the first time. There are several adjustments that you want to make next time around. And so I haven't had the opportunity to go back and revisit that pattern. I'm still keeping it in mind, though. But this pattern was chosen for me. And while I wasn't really the most jazzed up about it because it's just not my style, cargo pants are trending. And I don't really wear trends. I just wear what I like. But I do like seeing it as a trending option because I, now I'm seeing how celebrities or other individuals are pairing their cargo pants. And I'm going to share some photos of what I've seen, but it makes me a little more excited to work on this. I will not be doing view B at all. I do not like cuffed pants. So view C or view A it is. And the ch one challenge about these pants, even though it is rated as easy, it has a fly front and I don't know how to do that yet. So I guess we'll be teaching ourselves how to do a fly front in the next two months because that's when the challenge is. Stay tuned. The next pattern that I've recently picked up that is suitable for fall is McCall's 8247. This is a sweater pattern and I think it is just cute, versatile, very simple. It just speaks for itself. Now, I like the ribbon option for view A, but then I also like view B for the simplicity and then view C for the length. I do tend to like longer tops. That's why I like tunics because they tend to have a longer hemline. Um, but view C is probably what I would work on first if I decide not to be creative and go with view A. It's rated as easy, which is lovely. Moderate stretch knits, sweater knits, rib knit, cotton blends, and velour. I love it. And 
we're working with buttons and buttonholes and you guys know I've been taking a true liking to those now that I've taught myself how to make them so that is McCall's 8247 the next pattern is Simplicity 3036, that is 3036. This is a Mimi G pattern, and it's just a pair of drawstring pants. Super simple. I did pay a little over $5. I got this pattern on sale for 70% off on Simplicity.com. I did pay a little over $5, and that's not typically a price that I would pay for just one view. Like, it's just the one pair of pants on this pattern. but. I don't know. I'm really drawn to them. I don't know. It has drawstrings as well. And I don't think I've ever worked with a drawstring pattern. Very simple though. The pattern is rated as easy too. Just a regular pair of sweatpants, but of course you want to dress them up. I think that would be great for work because sometimes I, I do like to be really nice and comfortable. And so pairing this pattern with a sweater or like a cardigan like what Mimi what Mimi G has on would be perfect. I also like the color too. So this might be one of those patterns where I branch out and try a different color on my bottom as opposed to just working on my top. So we'll see how that goes. That is Simplicity 3036. The next pattern that I picked up is just a regular old basic vest pattern. This is McCall's 8050. It is unlined vest in two different lengths. And just a layering fun piece. I think I would play around with print when it comes to this, as well as making one or two that could be rotated across my wardrobe. But nothing major about this, just something I don't have. I don't own any vest. And I like to play with it. I like how the model has a t-shirt on with hers. That's probably not my vibe, but I do think it's cute. So I do think I could have fun with this pattern, as well as make it a staple in my workwear. So that's McCall's 8050. And I have to have an honorary dress pattern. This is McCall's 8434. This is just a, a dress in three different variations, playing with those sweater knits. I am taking a liking to view C. It does have some contrasting colors on there. I never really work with contrasting colors, but I would definitely give it a go. And I don't know if those buttons are functional or not. They might be functional buttons. But this is working with knits. I have abandoned my knits, so I got to come home every once in a while. So this is a knit sweater dress. Suggested fabrics are stretch knits, such as cotton knits, interlock, ponte, and rib knit. McCall's 8434. And the last pattern that I've recently picked up that is great for fall weather, transitioning into fall, is Simplicity 3011. This just came out as well. This is a jumpsuit pattern and it's also for stretch knits. So the suggested fabrics are jersey, ponte, scuba, and sweatshirt fleece. This is rated as easy. I have had a couple jumpsuits in my wardrobe. Um, none of them are me made. They're all ready to wear and I have worn those suckers out. I have worn them out. They may have little holes here and there. They may be ripped here or there, faded. They're faded for sure. And so, yeah, I could I could mend all of those and re-dye them. Yeah, sure. But why not just make another one, okay? Why not just make one? Just why be easy on myself when I could just make one? So that is 3,011, and I'm looking forward to that. Leisure wear is where it's at for this time of the year. Oh, sweatshirts. Cardigans, sweaters, sweatshirts, jumpsuits, jackets, shackets. Oh, I love fall. I thrive in fall. So those are all of my pattern picks as well as my fall sewing plans or my plans for the rest of the year. I hope that you enjoyed it. If so, definitely give me a thumbs up to let me know. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Join the fam. I would love to have you. Make sure you come back next week for all of my fall picks and pattern pairings. That's a mouthful. My fall picks and my fabric and pattern pairings. But I can't wait to show you all of the beautiful fabrics that I've picked up and the patterns that I would like to make with them. So definitely make sure that you come back next week for that. As always, I love you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.